Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where I, where I talk. It's just me. But this week, and you listen, yeah. listeners. <laughs> if you know what's good for you, you'll listen. Listen up and listen good. You are what's that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. And with me, as always, is someone who's also worth listening to. And you will listen. You will listen. You will to, sit there yeah. or continue your jog <laughs> or be at work and yep. ignore everything around you yep. or be at the gym yep. and you will like it. Yep. You're with Nick Mason. Hello. <laughs> it's great to be here. It certainly is, Mason. Uh, just before we get into everything, and why wouldn't we, Mason? Go on. I've got some sad news up top, unfortunately. Yes. With the passing of Lance Reddick. Yes, that's right. Uh, who apparently died of natural causes at the age of 61. He was missing some press events a few days prior ah. to um, to you know, all the John Wick 4 stuff that's coming up. That'll mm. be out this week. So we'll yeah, right, right. Next week. Mm. And, and yeah, unfortunately, was found in his hotel room non-responsive, which is... Just terrible. Very, news, very talented Mason. guy. Absolutely delightful by all accounts. He was yep. for, for if you don't know, Cedric Daniels on the Wire. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was of course John Wick's quartermaster in in the John Wick movies. Absolutely. And in between, just a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just a, whatever whatever he wanted to do, he would get in there and crush it. He was a big fan of Destiny, the video game. Yeah, he's well, he's in it. Yeah, but he was also games, but yeah. he was also he played it a lot and was just like Did he? very. Um, very in with the fan community. He was he was playing it apparently like the day before he died. Oh really? Like he wasn't just like one of those people who was like, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this and whatever. Like he was he would like you know join in quests with regular people and you know if, if he met people on the street they would they would ask him to you know some people get you to do the the voice oh, voice yeah, memo or the, that, yeah. the you know in character or what have you you know so that's awesome. But yeah, if you haven't seen him, watch him in the Wire. Obviously, he's in John Wick. Yeah. Um, he made a bunch of appearances on Comedy Bang Bang, mm-hmm. doing various bizarre stuff. Absolutely. Now, as as always, when you know somebody talented and liked passes, you'll see a lot of clips and stuff on YouTube of some of their stuff. But yeah, like he's one of those guys who had because he has that gravitas. He's like Andre Brower on the Wire. Yeah. He can just say the most ridiculous stuff, and it has that. Yeah. Have you seen? There's a it was a it was a bit on Comedy Bang Bang where uh, the the uh, the band leader sidekick Reggie Watts has to get the tweets of the week, mm. uh, and so he goes into the cyberverse and it's like a Tron world. Okay, and um, a Lance Reddick is Angel Fire and he's a he's a he's a Tron like an evil Tron guy who's stolen all the tweets of the week and they go on like a hoverboard chase. To get <laughs> I haven't the tweet. seen that at all. Uh, you'll, 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 I'll send it to you. I'll find, I'll find a copy and I'll send it to you. Unreal. But it's very silly. But in, and the Eric Andre show. Of course, and, that went around this week a lot, which yeah. is a lot of fun and terrifying as well. Yeah. As well. well, of course, people would know him from like Fringe, from Lost. Uh, he's in Horizon Zero Dawn. He's voicing Hellboy in, the, in that upcoming Hellboy oh, yeah, video right, game. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of really, really good, interesting, fun stuff. And again, mm. like you said, by all accounts, a really nice guy. And just like, this sucks. Yeah. Just a. Uh, Again, it's just it's never a bad guy, you know? You're never like, great, that's a good one this week. Yeah. It's always mm. it's always this. Something yeah. terrible. So yeah, there you go. But again, like what a great body of work and what a wonderful person by all accounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Mason, before we get to the news of the week, which is going to be get this, big Marvel leaks and how they're closing in on us. Oh, is there? That's right. That's exciting. Uh Quentin, maybe. Maybe not for you. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, no. <laughs> All the leaks I done. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's final movie seems to be, have been decided. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ja- so he says. That true. Ben Affleck not joining the DC directing a universe. Oh, he James- said he was, though. Yeah, well, no, or somebody sort of, said somebody he was. Said. James Gunn uh, directing Superman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zack Snyder teasing something Snyderverse related. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we're going to be getting into Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Uh, the big movie of the week, Mason. It That's might be right. the biggest movie of the week. Big time movie. Yeah. Hey, here's one. Oh, I just wanted to quickly say as well, uh, I'm on a podcast this week. That's right. It came out on Sunday. Confessions, formerly known as Confessions of the Idiots by Sam Peterson. It's a really funny show where people where he finds like weird confessions off Reddit and then he like recounts them to us and we decide what is the best thing for that person. Normally it's for them to go away and stop doing the thing they're doing. You give good uh, advice. That's right. It was uh, me and Sam and Kirsty Webeck, who's 
an amazing comedian also. And it's just a really fun time if people want to check that out. Oh, right. She's also touring at the moment if, you, if you're if you interested in checking that out. Oh, Which, yeah, Comedy Festival's coming up. in uh, Maybe next week I'll give some Comedy Festival recommendations. Ooh. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I'll be at a couple of things uh, for Comedy Festival. Oh, you're going to be in things? Yeah, I'll be at... I'll be on uh, Matt Stewart's podcast, a live version of Matt Stewart. Who knew it? Who knew it with Matt Stewart. I think that's – it's the weekend of the 8th and 9th. So one of these days I'm doing Who Knew It with Matt Stewart mm-hmm. and on the other day I'm doing uh, a, a podcast called Dice Paper Roll, which is a role-playing game, a role-playing live oh game my goodness. thing situation. Uh, so uh, just look those up at comedyfestival.com.au. I'll be there on those dates. I've never heard of that well, particular podcast. too bad. Oh, sorry. Great, good stuff. On, I'll find the actual dates. We'll find it. We'll find it. It's going to be great. Well, they'll uh, be linked below, right? They'll probably be linked below. Ah, uh-huh, here we go, James. So on Saturday, Saturday, April the eighth, I'll be doing dice paper roll, and then April, uh, Sunday, April 9th, I'll be doing who knew it with Matt Stewart. Ooh. And those are like afternoon gigs. So yeah, you right. Wanna, you want to get you want to get in there and then have dinner in the city afterwards. Why wouldn't you? I don't want to have dinner. Maybe I'll join you. I won't leave. Me? Yep. All right. All right. Great. <laughs> That'd be great. Terrific. Anyway, there's time codes below if people want to jump, jar, jump around to any particular topic. How about this? Here's one bit of news. What's that? Or maybe one big big time lie. Yep. Uh, Tom Cruise asked David Zaslav <laughs> if he could watch The Flash and he loved it. This is from Discussing Film and also The Hollywood this Reporter. This is true. Cruise called Andy Machete to tell him this is the kind of movie we need now. Is it true? Is it the kind of movie we need now? I mean, we don't, we won't know that until it comes out, and we can make. Maybe it'll be too late us. by the time it comes. Maybe Tom Cruise is like, "We need this now." That's right. You mean you need to bump the release date up? <laughs> oh, it's too late. Now Xenu's come. <laughs> He's gonna destroy the. What you should have. You should have got a laser gun. You should have done. You should have released it earlier, and Xenu would have been pleased. But now he's displeased. <laughs> It's going to kill you all with his laser, the big laser. He has a laser. From his ship. Yeah, he does. And he's got one on his ship and a handheld one. Typical. He's got two lasers. Typical. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if you think you're going to sneak past the laser on the ship and get on the ship, he's got a laser in it's his naive. hand. It's naive. It's naive. He might even have a laser in his throne. Yeah. Don't even. He might have a scepter. You're don't like, even oh, bother. That's a short range thing. No, it's got a laser in it. Yeah. Yeah. But he liked the flash. He liked the flash apparently. Yeah. Um. It led a conversation with Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav led to a private screening for Cruz at his Beverly Hills home. Very good. Does he even still live in Beverly Hills? I don't know. Yes. It's a mystery, isn't it? I don't know if this is true. How do you think this is true? Well, what's the source? Well, I mean, the source apparently is it says, it says sources tell the Hollywood Reporter. I'm not saying that the it hasn't I'm not saying that this hasn't been leaked to the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is it more a case of because who's someone we can get to say this is good? That's what I'm saying. Mr. Movies Mr. himself. Mr. Movies, Mr. Hollywood himself. <laughs> yeah. And somebody's called in a favor and said, hey, Tom Cruise, you know how you were in the in a massively well-regarded movie recently? Yeah. Could you say The Flash is the future of movies and you love it? <laughs> we'll do anything you want. Yeah. I feel like also he's got such a carefully crafted like PR team. No one would ever get close enough to him or be able to ask this any specific questions about the movie if he well, hasn't they'd, seen it. They'd be zapped by the laser on his throne, wouldn't That's they? That's true, they would. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great stuff. Mm. Well, it's not bad news for The Flash, is it, Mason? No. That no. Tom Cruise says he loves it. Copy of the movie was sent over. Yeah. Uh, Warner impro- Warner's employee brought the movie to Cruise's home in Beverly Hills and stayed until the actor finished watching The Flash. Oh, that's nice. It is unclear on what format Cruise watched it, mm-hmm. whether it was digital or film. When Cruise finished, the movie was given back to the messenger who returned it to the studio. He was so taken that uh, by what he saw, he reached out to Machete. Uh, it was a call out of the blue. He raved about the movie saying something to the effect is The Flash is everything you want in a movie. Great. Yeah. That's really good to know. Yeah. And is true. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mason. Go on. You know how you're the one who leaked all that Ant-Man stuff to Reddit? Yeah. And you thought up until now that you'd gotten away with it. Zero consequences, baby, I'll never die. I'm also joking about the fact that you leaked it, but you know who did. And that is true. Right, so if anybody from Disney or Marvel, is okay, out there, right, this is the man you want to speak so if, to. For, perhaps if perhaps if ASIO Australia's <laughs> uh, security services or the federal police want to knock on my door, that'd be to great. be clear. I do not know. <laughs> yeah, good one. But listen, Mason. even if I, even if somebody emailed in and we talked about it on the podcast, I've forgotten. <laughs> so what it would be is the federal police would knock on my door and they'd be like, "What? What about this?" And I'd be like, "I don't know. I'll check the emails. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of 
A lot of emails about tax relief in here. I don't I don't get it. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah, Spookiest yeah. Spookiest time of year, Ultimate some say. tax relief. Yeah, anyway, via comicbookmovie.com, there was an article earlier this week, and this is widely reported, that there is a Reddit page called Marvel, Marvel Studio Spoilers, and it just posts. I've been there before, but I try not to because it just outright spoils <laughs> movies with, like, leaked images. And in this case, there was, like, 65 pages of uh, – a 65-page document – which is just like a bunch of dialogue, which was just word for word <laughs> in the movie Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. He's behind me, isn't he, Kang? <laughs> yes, he is actually behind you. Uh, so Disney filed a copyright in the take. quantum realm. Yes, <laughs> he's behind me, Kang. Yes, yes, in the quantum realm, which is where we are. Where we are. So this is bad news. But Disney yeah. filed a copyright takedown, and this page has been shut down. Ooh. And Disney Marvel have actually filed legal documents seeking a subpoena in an attempt to identify the individual who leaked the script of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. It was me. That's right. That's what I was saying. THR also <laughs> saying. <laughs> I've regained my confidence. <laughs> I'm a bad little boy. <laughs> I'm leaking everything. You'll never get well, me. Well, you say that. <laughs> the Hollywood Reporter have mentioned that they are closing in on the individual. Oh, no. But again, what confidence it's got again. Mason's just joking he didn't leak it, but he does know who did. <laughs> Isn't that right? No. <laughs> I think it's cool. I think you, it's okay. cool how like, you do kind of a rebel. No, see, I, don't, I think it would only be cool if it was me. <laughs> I, w- I would t- I would claim it if it was me, but I wouldn't claim it if I knew the guy because that's okay. more complicated for me. Sure, if it was me, sure I'll get arrested, <laughs> but I don't want to. I don't want to get arrested for some other guy. No, you're not getting arrested. You're just getting tortured. Oh, okay, <laughs> not not by Disney. <laughs> yeah, by Disney. it's the worst. That's right. I'll get water park boarded. Oh, that's very that's good. The worst kind. Yeah, it's I've, it's Splash Mountain, but you go up it backwards. Yeah, yeah, and they put a blanket <laughs> over your head. Um. <laughs> I watched we watched I watched Shazam today and there was an ad of course for Warner Brothers Movie World, which is Hollywood on the Gold Coast, as Absolutely. you know. And they they do there's, there's a in our latest caravan of garbage, there's a some photos of me as a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who I hung I hung out there, Mason had a great time That's meeting right. Batman and Catwoman. Go on. With your three home haircuts, <laughs> you and your brothers. Anyway. How did you know? <laughs> Anyway, uh, they still they do in the ads for the Warner Brothers movie world, and they show you there's like you know a parade down Main Street of all the colourful Warner Brothers characters, Woo! and they still have the Jim Carrey Batman Riddler. Do they from Batman? They don't Forever. have the Paul Dano garbage no, bag. That's what I'm saying. They upgraded. I mean, why would still, they? He can still have the still give him like the the question mark cane or whatever, but he <laughs> but he's but he like everybody else is dancing and jumping around and somersaulting, and he just slowly shuffles down the street, and he's like, I like one day real rain will come and kill him. Everybody in Gotham. I'd like to see him like live streaming to all these incel fans and he's just like shouldered a rifle. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's heading down. <laughs> yeah. He's had all taped up with mm. a garbage bag. Great stuff, Mason. Mm. This is by THR also. Ooh. Quentin Tarantino's final movie is apparently a lock. Of course, Uh-oh. he said, I'm only going to do 10 movie. And this okay. is it. This will be the last one because he considers – uh, Kill Bill 1 and 2, 1 movie. So it's technically yeah, 11 would. movies. Mm. So it's going to be called The Movie Critic, and the okay. movie will take place in Los Angeli- Angeles. Angeles? Yeah, Angeles. Yeah, uh, yeah, in, yeah. The la- in the late. It's going to take place in Anglesey. Anglesey, good. In the late 1970s. Oh. And will follow a female lead character. Uh, now, it's possible this story will fo- focus on Pauline Kael one of the most influential movie critics of all time. And in the late 1970s, uh, she had a very brief tenure working as a consultant for Paramount, a, a position she accepted at the behest of actor Warren Beatty. So apparently they had, like, there was some some situation happened there and I don't know the specifics of it, <laughs> but presumably at the end one of them will cave the other one's head in. Absolutely, this yeah. will be an alternate uh, look at history. <laughs> Pauline Kale and Warren Beatty will team up to, <laughs> I don't know, fight Nazis or Or whatever. each other. Yeah, maybe. So, oh, yeah. you think it'll be a... Yeah. Okay. It's interesting that his final movie is another love letter to Hollywood when his last one was a love letter to Hollywood. It's I mean, just, I guess he did like two westerns in a row. Yeah, and he's just and loving. there's like Pop Fiction and, you know, and Reservoir Dogs and Jackie Brown are kind of in that same kind of vibe. So, yeah, right. yeah I guess, he, guess he's loving these old Hollywood situations. Here's a question for you, though. Go on. Uh, do you know who leaked that stuff to the Reddit for real, though? Yeah. Yeah. And second thing, mm-hmm. uh, do you think this is true that he's going to quit? No. Do you think he's going to – I mean, do you think he'll get around it by doing like, this is a streaming series or this is a movie but it's not <laughs> technically a movie because it's a, it's a, it's a something else. He'll think of another word. Oh, I so see. I can't think of another word but mm. he could think of another word. I mean – He's not retiring, no. right? Well, he'll do – I'm sure he'll write as well. He writes 
like books and stuff. I mean, he's been he's been in that he's been in that zeitgeist for a long time, you know. Yeah. So maybe he's just like, how many has it been? Ten. Ten. Okay. What a move, though, to just be like, I quit. Hmm. Because he knows, I mean, he's seen it before and he's talked about how nobody stays on top forever, you know. Maybe Not even he, podcasts. Maybe he, maybe he finally agrees to do a Marvel movie and he just tanks it. <laughs> like he spends $500 million of their movie and, and it gives them something unusable. That would this be is great. revenge. Why not? Did, well, have we talked about that? Oh, how? Like he's got a huge beef with Marvel and Disney for oh, a was long Disney time. Disney because they kept the hateful laid out of cinemas or they Yeah, knocked, yeah, yeah. Because when it was, came out the same time as The Force Awakens. That's the one, yeah. And that just... Just took up every screen, and he was yeah, because he he had he wanted to put the the hateful eight. Well, he did. He arranged for the hateful eight to be at a, a place called the Arc Light. Yeah, because they have a seventy millimeter projector, and that's how it's meant to be seen, and etc. I saw it on a TV. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, go on. What kind of TV was it? I don't know. Nice. I wasn't even. That's what I was, he, that's... I was mostly on my phone. Okay. <laughs> And that's cinema. That's cinema, baby. <laughs> but anyway, Disney went to the arc light and was like, "We got to, ex- we want to extend the 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 running of Force Awakens for you know a few more weeks to blah blah blah." And obviously, we want all your screens. And they were like, "Well, f- of course, you can have all the screens except for the ones yeah. of the hate. Uh, the, we've we've arranged for the hateful eight. And then they were like, "Well, if you don't bump the hateful eight for this for a few more weeks of the Force Awakens, we, you'll never get another Disney movie." Yeah. And so he's and so they had to, and, mm. and now he's mad at it. So yeah, I say he he could what he should do. He should do his ten, and then he should be like, "Yeah, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna direct um, Black Panther three, and then he just spends all of their money, and yeah. then it, and then he just gives them nothing. And it's rude. And it's rude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's rude. The worst crime of all. <laughs> Disney, a rude movie? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, they, they've released a Boston Strangler series on Disney+. Plus, I think it's but, just a movie. Is it? Okay. Well, it's on Hulu in, ah, uh, I see, right, right, right. in, in Australia. I think it's a movie. I don't know. Mm. The important thing is here's something that's also a movie. But At least really. he's not rude, that Boston Strangler. Hey, well, yeah, he's got a certain decorum is what you're saying. Mm. Uh, this is from Hollywood Reporter also, Mason. Go on. At ben Affleck said, I would not direct something from uh, James Gunn's DC. Absolutely not. I have nothing against James Gunn. Nice guy. Sure, he's uh, going to do a great job. I just wouldn't want to go in and direct the way they're doing that. I'm not interested in that. So James Gunn has tweeted about how he's been talking to Ben Affleck about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously, if this is true, but who knows if it is? Because you know, people can come around and money, and you find the right sure. project or whatever. But he also talked about the when he quit Batman and how like it was just really depressing and doing that Justice League reshoots was like the worst thing ever, yeah. and it drove him to drink. And uh-huh. it ended up being, uh, and then his and, all, all family yeah, fell apart. That whole <laughs> that that interview is fascinating. People should get on that. But yeah, yeah there's, he talks about how Yed Snyder was just like coming in my backyard, and we'll film, we'll put the back suit on, and he's like, "What's the? What are we doing?" And he's like, "I don't know. We'll figure it out." Wait, this is for the Reed thing. This is oh, this is for oh, I'm, so oh, I'm yeah. talking about the the right, Whedon right, right. stuff. Well, well, the Whedon's stuff, like, right. I got this, but then yeah. he's like, I don't think I don't know if this. I do got this <laughs> actually. <laughs> So, yeah, but he said he was great in the, in the new Flash movie. So okay. that's good. That the one that's not out yet, that's, the, that's a good good one and we should go see it. Yeah, Tom Cruise, he's re- highly recommended. I've heard that. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. And by Zeno, I hope he's correct. Mason, this is by James Gunn, direct oh, on we're gonna Twitter. We're going to have everybody after us after this episode. Good, I hope so. Yeah. I'm going to burn all bridges. Nice. And then we'll make, it run, we'll make a run at Hollywood to direct a Marvel movie. Yeah, okay? terrific. Me and you. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> Uh, so James Gunn took to Twitter. This is after last week where Comic mm. Pop, Pop broke the news, Ooh. Sal over at Comic Pop, mm. that he's going to be directing a Superman movie. And this is what he said. Yes, I'm directing <laughs> Superman Legacy to be released on July 11th, 2025. My brother- Kisses to the haters, he said. <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got some hater stuff later that he talks oh, about. Oh, We get it to Shazam. But he said, my brother Matt told me when he saw the release date, he started how to cry. This, how many brothers does this guy have? Too many is what you're saying? It's got at least two. Mm, I agree. Mm. I asked him why, and he said, dude, it's dad's birthday. I hadn't realized. Doesn't even know his dad's birthday. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I lost my dad almost three years ago. He was my best friend. He didn't understand me as a kid, but he supported my love of comics and my love of film, and I wouldn't be making this movie now without him. Isn't that cool? Mm. So because sometimes you might not connect with your kid, Mason. You I know see. that about me. I never even. I don't. We don't. We don't see eye to eye on anything. That's right. Just constant fighting. But if they want to throw rocks at a train. That's their passion and I let them. That's right. Yeah. And then you're like, you're the train. <laughs> Throw rocks at them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See how the train feels, you say. No, I think. That's I, at my request. Yeah. But I love hearing stuff like that where like a parent's like, I don't get it, but whatever. He's got three brothers. There you go. And one cousin. <laughs> Maybe more cousins, but there are. One the, cousin? There are, there, are, there are four notable names in his Wikipedia that all yep. have blue 
blue writing. Sean, Matt, Brian, and Mark. There you go. Mm. Anyway, support your kids is what I'm saying sure. in the, all their endeavors. He said, it's been a long road to this point. I was offered Superman years ago. I initially said no because I didn't have a way that in that felt unique and fun and emotional that gave Superman the dignity he deserved. Then a, a bit less than a year ago, I saw a way in. In many ways, centering around Superman's heritage, where how he's, how both his aristocratic Kryptonian parents and his Kansas farmer parents inform who he is and the choices he makes. So I chose to take on writing the script, but I was hesitant to direct despite the constant pestering by Peter Safran and others to commit. So, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. James. Come on. Uh, just direct a movie for us, James. Just do a big temp pop movie for us, James. James, just do a thing that nobody's ever really successfully fully done before. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. It's easy. I'd do it, but I hurt my leg. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> Just because I write something doesn't mean I feel it in my bones visually and emotionally enough to spend two years directing it, especially not something of this magnitude. But the long and the short of it, short of it is I love this script and I'm incredibly excited as we begin this journey. Hashtag up, up and away. Oh, very good. I think this is good news. Yeah. I think if you also watch his journey as a filmmaker, uh-huh. he's definitely he's put more since not all of his projects, but there is more sincerity as you see kind of filter into his yeah. work. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as this announcement happened, I saw a lot of people on the socials being like, Oh, this guy, Mr. Quips over here. Is he going to do? Is he though? I don't think he is. No, no. but I, I, I feel like, you know, it's, it's suggesting that he's only got one gear. I think is, is not true or, you know, or that it's, it's going to be sassy Marvel the whole time through. And I don't think it is. Yeah. I think that those Guardians movies and Peacemaker as well and Suicide mm-hmm. Squad, that stuff like stands above everything else kind of in that genre, mm. I feel. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. I think this is good news. Anything can be good or bad though. And it's let's true. wait to see what Tom Cruise thinks and then we'll, we can absolutely. all pass judgment. What if he's like not as good as The Flash? I've mm. seen it. And this is the good. wrong time for this movie. Mm, you know when the right. right time is? Never. God, Tom Cruise, you're never this main. Settle down, Tom Cruise. <laughs> God, he's up a bit, mate. He used to be so chill. He's, did he? No. <laughs> no. This is, the, this is the last bit of news, Mason. Uh-huh. In a tweet with the caption, full circle, Zack Snyder posted a video that said, incoming transmission from Lord Darkseid. Oh. And it said, save the date, April 28th to 30th. <laughs> is it his wedding? Is it Darkseid's wedding? Save the date. Wow. Uh, and then it says you, you check off chicken or fish. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Or abstain. <laughs> abstain. Uh, there's going to be a wishing well on the night if you want to give us some money wow. as a gift. Wow. The best gift is money, mm. Mason. Um, He's marrying Metron, and I think that's beautiful. Is that true? Yeah, it's true, yeah. How long have they been together? Yes. Yeah. An eternity, I An think. Eternity? Yeah, it's, it's a, a bit like Eternity years, I know, right? Why Finally. bother at this point? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so save the date between the 28th to the 30th of April of this year. And there was another message that went out that said, MOS, BVS, ZSJL. What could that mean? The fact that I know what all those <laughs> acronyms mean, and I didn't even have to think about it for a millisecond, makes me question a lot of things, honestly. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who don't know, because you're normal, um, that refers to Matt, the, the three movies he directed in the Justice and in, in the in the DC Snyderverse: mm-hmm. Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, and Zack Snyder's version of Justice League. And so he wrote, "Life is a cycle from birth to death to rebirth. Life is a cycle. I'm gonna pedal to the oh. shops. Nice. Get some milk. <laughs> Do you think? Yep." Uh, and so the hero's journey is a cycle as well, a continuous journey of growth and transformation. Again, April 28th, 29th, 30th. Now, this could be a screening of some description, mm. could be the announcement of a comic. There's the very sm- slim outsider chance that this is a cinematic rebirth or, rebirth or continuation. Mm, sure, uh, sure. I, look, yeah. if you're if you're hyped for that, yeah, I don't want to. I, look, I would sh- I would love that for you, mm. but I don't think that's what it is. If it, look, yeah, I mean, there's a very slim chance that Zack Snyder has said, "Listen, I've somehow secured independent funding <laughs> for the Snyderverse, and also I've independently made an agreement with James Gunn yep. and Peter Zaslav and everybody at Warner Brothers and DC, and we're going to make more Snyderverse movies somehow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you all get free tickets for supporting me. That's good. Yeah, but it's not that. Is Could it? be. I think it's a watch along or something. Yeah. And we're going to watch all the movies. Well, it says, there is the idea that it's continuous, and he does say life is a circle. I don't know. Mm. I think it, it sounds like it's going to be 
some kind of continuation potentially. Okay. But again, I don't think it's a. What is that? Uh, yeah, it could and be. What a, would make could the be fans a comic? Happen. It could be I an audio it, drama. I don't think the comics making anybody happy. Audio drama it could be an audio drama. Don't know. Maybe yeah. he sells the script. Like he's got it all like packaged up and he oh, yeah. sells it off. And it's an NFT. And it's an NFT. I'm putting some money on it being an NFT. I think it's too late for NFTs. I don't know. I, Facebook I, is shutting I think, down NFTs. I think I, saw, I think I saw an ad for some or like a something NFT like yesterday maybe and I'm like, boy, isn't it too late for NFTs but they're still giving it a crack. Did you get one? Yeah, I got one. Great. Yeah, because yeah, I mean it's an investment in my future, isn't it? That's true. In in on Twitter, there's been 1,663 tweets in the last hour. Hashtag NFTs. Yeah, but they're all bots. Yeah, they're they they're are all bots. people trying to sell all the NFTs. That I they bought. feel like it, it was it was it was some kind of I'll never find it in a trillion years. But it was somebody like some known figure being like, "Hey, what about hey everybody? What about NFTs? What about them?" And what everybody about? just went, "Boo." <laughs> It's, well, yeah, as I said, Facebook are even shutting down NFTs. Mm. And they, they're they last to everything. That's true. You know, they did one thing right a million years ago, mm. and it's just been just awfulness ever since. And by that one thing right, the, the thing after the thing where it was raiding women. And then they oh, yeah. made a social media platform, and that was all right mm. for a second, and now it's absolute dog shit. <laughs> just an unfucking readable page of dreck. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pretty cool, though. Pretty. Co- it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah. We've got that. Facebook group, great mates. That's, that is great. That's, that's the only that reason I go on that's Facebook. Right. Shazam Fury of the Shazam! Gods. Shazam! Yep, whoa. Uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods, Mason. Yes. It's uh, The budget was reportedly, it was bumped up. It was initially thought to be about $100 million, but now it looks to be more in the realm of $125 million. The realm of the gods. Very good. Big jump from the first movie. Big jump like a god. Agreed. Big, big, big jump from like, Guys, so, lightning, yeah, 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 and so forth. Uh-huh. But I guess the, the difference with that one, I think, a big reason why it did well. First of all, it's got it did well better at the box office, which I'll talk about. But especially in comparison to its budget, like it wasn't a huge hit. It's true, but it didn't cost this much. Uh, but this new one opened at thirty million dollars on its US opening weekend, which is even slightly lower than initially thought. Shazam twenty nineteen. Made fifty three million at the oh. box office its opening weekend, so it's big time down on that. Mm-hmm. And Black Adam made sixty seven million, but I also think Black Adam had a huge marketing push. Why did it? And and like and even that, like that's not very that's mm. not great for Absolutely. a movie of that. Like they wanted a billion out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah inexplicably. Yeah, yeah. marketing um, for Shazam too was bad. <laughs> Yeah. It was just the clip of Zachary Levy going, I just threw a bus at a dragon, and then everybody going, boo. Stop that it. That was built into the, the ad. <laughs> so people were going, boo, cut this out. And they did. And they, Yeah, yeah. And they're like, we will. It's me, David F. Sandberg. I will cut this out. Well, apparently that was like this picture was locked in like October uh-huh. because the initial release date, this was, of course, in December, was going to go up against yeah. Avatar 2. <sighs> yeah, I don't – look – it's not doing well and it mm. doesn't seem like it's going to do well. But you're suggesting counter-programming. Maybe. For I people mean, who don't want to see Avatar 2, I which guess. is no one because everyone saw yeah, it. Yeah, I know, I know, right? It's, I mean, who who knows at this point? Maybe that's a very silly thing to say. <laughs> but I, I – I, okay, we'll talk about why – You've got the silly release. Yes. We'll talk about why it maybe didn't do so well or isn't going to do so well. There was a comment that David Sandberg, who I really like, made on Reddit where he said – it's not like any of this comes as a surprise, as in the box office. Mm-hmm. I saw where this was heading a long time ago. I'll be all right, though. I got paid all my money up front. Smiley face. And then he, like, that went around. Mm-hmm. And, and some people took it people as... People were like, how dare you? Well, people, how dare you disrespect the craft? I took that as, like, it's not going to do well in the box office. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I never took it as him going, no, this is bad. I made, yeah, a, yeah. made a bad movie. But he went on Twitter and he said, oh, no, this reply on Reddit, taken out of context, was made as a joke and is now being read all the wrong ways. I guess the smiley I added on the original comment didn't do the trick. It was absolutely not a comment on the quality of the film, which I'm very proud of. So there you go. Uh, what do you think happened here in terms of why why this isn't doing great? Oh, that's a fun addition to what do you think the story was. Yes. What, what, what happened? Th- what happened here? Yeah. Uh, I think it is not it, – It's. I don't think it is – again, I don't think it's a comment on the quality of the movie. I think it is – Audiences have been the the, the most ho- high profile movies, superhero movies, of the last you know six months to a year. Yeah, have uh, been bad, and people have been burned, and they're like, I don't want to chance it with another one. Quite yeah, frankly, that's fair enough. So I like I like Black Adam, but I might be the only one. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp was Quantum Mania was fine. I thought this was better than Quantum Mania. I thought it was way better than Quantum Mania, yeah. honestly. Yeah, if I may, if I may, be so bold. I'll allow it. 
and I'll say, and you'll listen, all of you. <laughs> I don't care if you're hanging on bloody one of those thing you wash the thing with the wash you wash the windows of a building you hang it on the thing you know the you don't you, mind that you do the you do the thing with the rope and, ee, 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 and yeah, you go yeah, up yeah. and down the building okay but you'll listen yeah you got to hear this yeah I don't care if you're up on a big girder with all your mates you're opening your lunch pail you're just a lunch pail Joe out there opening you what's the wife put in here <laughs> or the husband whatever partner you have that's fine you know? yeah yeah. You don't oh, care? I don't care. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah. I'm glad you don't but care. But you'll listen. Okay. You'll take your hard hat off and you'll listen. <laughs> you'll take your hard hat and your harness off and you will listen. Just, just drop fucking, them. Yes, just drop just them. Just drop them off the side of a building. <laughs> just drop them. Just kick your toolbox off the side of a building and listen, all right? <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. I think About it's, the thing that I said about safety? No, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I also don't think you're wrong about the, like, the reasons people aren't going mm-hmm. to this. Because like, the initial word of mouth is not great yeah it's like either people are like yeah, it's fun to like i didn't love it as much as the first one i think also it's probably about two years late yes and uh-huh. that and that is reflected in a lot of the cast in this mm-hmm. which we'll talk about i think also it's got all these kind of remnants of the snyderverse uh-huh, sure. in it yeah but if you're a fan of the snyderverse you don't care and this is too silly for you it's too silly and like it's not it's sort of connected and loosely connected but you know that that's not continuing mm. it would so say, why bother is so that? why bother so and again this is a thought i had quite recently is the you know the the obsession with making all these powerfully interconnected yeah means that once the chain is broken you just, some people are just not going to be interested Absolutely. in seeing them anymore. And if, if one's bad, they're like, well, the next one, since they're all pa- so in- interconnected, the next one's going to be bad too. And so it, it maybe, it's yeah. a, maybe it's a chain reaction kind of thing. Absolutely. I didn't see the last one and I'm definitely not going to see the next yeah. one. For, I, for EG. For EG. That's, that's mm. a good EG. I think also the fact that this is the end of the DCEU, mm. really. I mean, I know Aquaman is- Before it even got a name. Like, or it even officially, officially got, a, got name. a name, yeah. Wow. Because the next one is the Flash, which reboots everything. And even though Aquaman is like they've they've retooled it, so mm. it's part of the, the newer universe, along yeah, yeah, with yeah. Blue Beetle, which is probably coming out as well. Ha <laughs> ha, good one. Thank you. I also think that for the character of Shazam, even though Shazam. I liked it, mm. that movie. I, I liked it quite a bit and it was fun and there's like good jokes and good which action. One are you talking in about? It. The first one or the first Shazam, yeah. Mm. Uh the twenty nineteen one. Also, like 2019 to now, yeah. such a long, like a lot happened. Yeah. Like it feels like a million years ago. It does, like doesn't it? Yeah. 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 But I think also there's no hardcore fans of Although that. Although one character says that it's been two years. That's, within that's the, within the, not the, true. Within, the, within the, the, the canon of the movie, we'll talk about it later. We'll have yeah. to talk about it in spoilers. It's, they've, it's been two years. Sure. It's been longer than that. But I think this needed to come out sooner to mm-hmm. build an audience and there's no one. And there's no one who's like a. <laughs> I wish I had more bottle to crack open there. Just... <laughs> and I don't think there's like hardcore fans of it. You know, mm, it yeah, didn't. Yeah. It didn't build enough to get there. Shazamis. But it's interesting to go back to what you said about the Zamis. About the Zamis. Zamels. The jewelers. Yes. Yeah. About that. No. About how a bunch of like comic book movies aren't great. So why would you go? This is from Daniel the Temp on Twitter who says. Pretty wild that the DCEU might become the first ever film franchise to release five consecutive box office bombs. And this is not including Joker or the Batman, Mm -hmm. which is in a separate et cetera universe. Sure, sure, sure. Because before this we had Black Adam, which Mm -hmm. was a bomb. And none of this is a reflection on the quality, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Adam was a – that one is though. Black (laughs) – it was fine. Yeah. Black Adam was a bomb. The Suicide Squad, which I really liked, was a bomb. Again, that came out in um, COVID and whatever. But it still bombed. Like it bombed hard. Before that was Zack Snyder's Justice League. doesn't count because it went to streaming and whatever. But so that's not part of the five. Then it was Wonder Woman 84, which bombed. But again, that was also released to streaming. And it was really bad. And it was bad. Did you know Scream 6 was released to streaming same day? Was it? You can get it on YouTube now. Scream 6. Yeah, yeah. The oh, latest screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Buy or rent. I'm like, oh, I should have stayed home. I mean, I liked it, but, um, you know. I don't think it is. Oh, it Scream was, 5 is. It was on my telly. Your telly lied to you. Wow, I got lied to by my telly. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the Maybe bloody, this was a leak. Wouldn't be the first time. Mm. And then before. What does that mean? <laughs> no, it's not important. And then before that, it was Birds of Prey. Uh-huh. So that's five bombs mm. in a row. Scream 6, buy or rent. Oh. But I bet you if you click on it, it will give you a date. And it'll oh, say, I see. Right. Available, whatever. Okay, let's have a look. You've been tricked by a, by a no? screen again. Rent you movie. can watch it literally. Right now. I don't believe you. Wow. Click on it. But I don't want to buy it. 
Let me check. HD Rental doesn't say doesn't say it'll be available in six years or whatever. So no, I went home from scream from recording the podcast, and I'm like, huh? There you go. Is that is it on all the torrent sites or whatever? Don't know. I guess it wouldn't be. I don't think this is real. All right. I think that you can just get ahead of it. Oh, it'd say release date. Yeah. Otherwise, I, it'd be tricked. But I know this didn't go day and day. Hmm. I'm gonna look at it. Well, in, I guess I just lived a I just live a charmed life. It's not in Amazon. That's interesting. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Anyway, good news on screen, I guess. <laughs> what if you want to go oh, yeah. It. Also, I wonder about this. It's been so long since Shazam 1. Yeah. There would be a whole, there, I feel there would be a whole new generation of moviegoers. And the last thing they saw with a bunch of characters, with, or the last character they saw with like that scale armor and the lightning bolt in the chest was Black Adam. That's so true. There might be a bunch of people, <laughs> like, you know, young kids, teenagers, you know, want, want to get their parents to take them to the movies or they're just going to the movies themselves for the first time. And the first big superhero movie they saw on the big screen was Black Adam. Yeah. And then they see this and they're like, oh, is this in the Black Adam universe? No, thank you. Yuck and no. Yuck and no, please. I want to talk about that specifically in a okay. minute, but I want you to tell me what you think the story was. Okay. This isn't as much fun as what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often we do like up to like around 10 minutes on. How did, how did we get here with this? <laughs> what happened? Um. <laughs> All right, so it's Philadelphia. Go Philly um, cheesesteaks. Cheese Go the Philly cheesesteaks. Go the Philly flyers. Um, and uh, the the Shazam. Go the movie Philadelphia, starring Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Uh, the the Shazam family. They're all they they they're all going around saving people in Philly and doing an okay job, I guess. Pretty yeah. all right. It's been two years, apparently. It's been only two a mere two years, but yeah. They're doing all right, and they're they're still living in their little little maid family in a little house, and that's pretty cool. And uh, it's a cool house. But then look out, because they're where they get the where the, the powers. Maybe somebody else wants their powers. They're Ooh. like, you shouldn't you shouldn't have those powers. We should have those powers. What do you think about that? We're going to take your powers. I'm Helen Mirren, and and Lucy Liu, and who knows who else? Diedrich uh, Bader is oh, in this movie. Diedrich Bader is in this. Yeah. yeah, he's the voice of Batman. Sometimes he sometimes is. Mm-hmm. He was in Drew Carey. That's right. Yep. There might be the a, show. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe the I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. Uh and there's another uh, there's a there's a third person which is oh, probably obvious. It's which, you the viewer. No, it's you not. get brought into the movie. No, there's a person who they okay. cut they cast this role. It's not you. Helen Mirren holds up a mirror on the screen. It doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't work at all. Maybe that's the reason this movie hasn't been doing well. Word of mouth, because I'm telling everybody. She holds it up and she's like, you, the viewer, you're the third bad guy. And I'm like, what are you doing, Helen Mirren? Are you all right? No. And then she, Oh, you can hear me. Then she turns on the screen and she's like, David, you said this would work. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't, you're you're improving, Helen Mirren. <laughs> this is dangerous. <laughs> British people shouldn't improv. Only Diedrich Bader should improv. I agree. Because he was on Whose Line Is It Anyway, maybe. He probably was in that or guessed yeah. it. I don't think this movie is as strong as the first one, despite thinking it was it was all right. Okay. I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. I again I thought it was better than New Ant Man, but I didn't I thought it was better than Black Adam, but I didn't think it was as good as the first one as mentioned. This, what this, a lab what a labyrinthian web of, of Well, it's better than this, but not as good as this one. This movie Go on. should have been mm-hmm. the Black Adam introduction movie. Probably should. I mean, they hinted at him in the last movie yeah. four years ago. Oh, they did because there was an empty chair. Empty chair. And you see like a little sparkly hologram of him and whatever. That's right. If you recall correctly. Not really. And there's like, there was another guy. <laughs> Actually, this movie should have been the Mr. Mind movie. We'll go talk about that in a bit as well. <laughs> okay. But so the, instead of like bringing in the first Shazam mm-hmm. and what a threat because it's The Rock yeah. versus this... 40-year-old man mm. uh, who's like, I'm a boy. And so he's doing that. Uh-huh. It's just like, I don't know, a, like a wizard or a witch from another dimension or whatever, mm-hmm. I guess, and they want to get a thing. It's like, well, that's not very interesting, is it? Okay. Don't you think? I like this movie pretty much as much as I like the first one. Mm. I quite like the first one. I quite like this one. I didn't go for a Shazam one rewatch this week. No. Uh, but uh, from what I remember, I remember being about this good. It's weird, right? Because yes. there's a I didn't I was thought I thought there would be a real disconnect between Billy Batson as a kid and when he's the grown man Shazam in mm-hmm. the first movie. And yeah. I thought that was like they interlinked it enough where it felt like the same character. Uh-huh. But now it's weird because the guy who plays Billy Batson is 20 and when so he's like a young man and then he changes into like a middle-aged man. Yes. So it's just a man. A middle-aged man-child. Yeah, a man changing into another man. Yep. And he's just like, oh, what's happening? 
doing? I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, this, they feel like two completely different people. And you said something interesting before the show. Hell about, yeah, I did. And he's admitted it. <laughs> about who you thought the kid was supposed to be, right? From my, my memories of the previous one was that Zachary Levi Shazam's civilian identity yeah. was the... Freddie Freeman character yeah. who actually because they have the same personality. They have the same personality, but that was my memory of it, like my my recall. And then I'm like, oh no, it's this other guy. Yeah, who's yeah, like a quite a mature young man who turns into this, and it's more it's more evident because he's Zachary Levi is so big in this, yeah, or seemingly so big that you, I'm like, oh, he's a he's a big weird man baby, and he's weird. He's way more immature as the God version. Yeah. And I think and if somebody commented on that, if if the, if the, if there was a subplot of this of like, did your brain some, change? Yeah, like the wisdom of Solomon isn't working, and that's why you you're so weird. Yeah, and man, baby, like, yeah, exactly. And I think it's only him because there are there's other people in the family, and when they transform, like it's Adam Brody is the grown up Freddie uh-huh. Freeman, mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah, and everybody else. I mean, one of them is literally the same person. Yes, as well. And I think all of those. You can definitely see the connection, but I think they let uh, – what's his name? The guy who plays Shazam. Zachary, Zachary Levi. Levi. They just let him fucking Deadpool all over yeah, this. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And it's just – it's he's just not – I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him anymore. Right. He's annoying. And it's – yeah, it should have – I it, liked him in the first right. one. I, look, I don't think that this bit affected my enjoyment of the movie, but I think you're absolutely right. This – the the young guy should have been wackier or yeah weird. I think if they because just had to brought him up to, yeah. or bring one down have them yeah. meet in the middle uh-huh. yeah maybe it's also because the young guy he's not in it that much that's true yeah mm. I don't know maybe if we saw more of him but yeah 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 but I guess they wanted because also Freddie Freeman is mostly civilian in his civilian identity in this movie yeah so, and and interacting with adult Shazam kind of like mostly like in the in the yeah. first one so I wonder if they're just like well we just need two wacky dudes being wacky together you know I guess as is the classic comedy duo two com- wacky two <laughs> wacky guys and no seriousness <laughs> yeah I don't know I, it's I just thought it was just a strange kind of turn of events but again I didn't I shouldn't even say that I don't like him because that's not even true because mm. it's there's some fun moments in it but I feel like the comedy in this isn't as good as the first one. Like that little montage where he's trying out his powers is fun. Uh-huh. You remember the moment where like the vil- they're both in the air and the villain, Mark Strong, is doing the speech to him and he's uh-huh. like, I can't hear you because right. you're like a kilometre away. <laughs> right. uh-huh. Like little things like yeah, yeah, that yeah. I thought were, were really fun and this was kind of lacking. And I guess, you know, there's a dragon in this and it's made of wood. Is wooden, there? And that's kind of cool. Mm. And everybody's always like, look at that. Sure. And that's and again, uh, there's Lucy Liu and Helen Miram and a third person, who is it, who could say... I liked all their performances as well. But again, it just kind of felt like, oh, this should be a different story. I right. feel like, and the only now, are you doing my, are you doing the thing that I often do, which is, which is critique a movie for what it isn't as yes. opposed to what it is? Well, I just think that the idea of the universe that they should have built was just derailed by the rock at some point. And that's okay. why we're here. So this is the rock's fault. Yeah. That, mm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, kind of. You're probably right. <laughs> well, this should have gone in a different direction. And if you kind of, I mean, it was like when he came into the Fast and Furious, and it kind of the whole thing got a like a mm. revamp. You know, just the idea of bringing in bringing in a bit like a bigger name actor into this universe, yeah. I think would have done it better than just like I don't know this situation. Sure, okay, right, right, right. And it's got a dragon, as mentioned, and that was all sure right. It, does. it, it also spin. has uh, a lot of shots from the final battle in the trailer. So yes. if you if you're at all concerned about that, maybe. If you love that. Yeah, if you love that, you'll be loving this. I tell you what. Uh, you know what I liked? I liked there's some um, there's some sort of monsters from Days of Yore that I thought were Yeah, yeah cool. I thought the effects that was were great. Good. Yeah. We got a lot of sort of, is it Ray, did Ray Harryhausen do a Cyclops? Did feel, of, yes, he did, like yeah. A, like a Wrath of the Titans. We it got, did feel got, like got, that, we got, a, we got a sweet Cyclops and a, and some harpies and some all sorts of mm. minotaurs and monsters and so forth, which, which I thought were good. And that, you know, that was in keeping with the theme. Yeah. It's interesting because we watched Dungeons and Dragons as well earlier in the week. That's and true. that's got a bunch of like mythical creatures in it or whatever. Uh-huh. And I didn't, I think Dungeons and We've Dragons. We've got to fight a bunch of mythical creatures or whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> I think like I, I liked the Dungeons and Dragons movie more and we'll talk about that in a few weeks. But I didn't feel like in seeing this, I wasn't like, oh, this is awful compared to Dungeons and Dragons. Like right. all that stuff that I liked. I think mm-hmm. there was some cool magic stuff in it. Yeah, like yeah. there's a weird magic room with a pen that can write and whatever. Mm. And all that door stuff I, I really enjoyed of the doors that can go anywhere and mm. whatever. They've 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 got a they've built their 
their their mat their lair their superhero team lair is mm. sort of it uh, it's got that sort of matrix thing of the the, the infinite number of doors that yeah. go to various realms and different places in the world and exactly so yeah. and that's fun mm. but then when it comes down to the end of just like they're just like blasting each other uh-huh. and like this was there was so much cool kind of magic stuff that we uh-huh. saw and then it's just like mm. and again. Jaimon Honsu underused. Absolutely. As in, as well, in he, most, role, he as in most about, roles he's, he's had, yeah. No, I, th- I thought he got a lot of play in this mm. and he's always good. He's uh-huh. always good. But he even talked about this week that like, yeah, he doesn't like get paid properly for stuff, even though he's been in just every major franchise. Yeah, uh-huh. He's in every universe mm. and he's always incredible. He's like an amazing actor. Uh-huh. But, you know, that's fine, I guess. Don't you think it's fine? Well, it's not us. So, yeah, I guess <laughs> to that extent it is fine. Were it one of us, yeah. we would be mad. Uh, I thought I thought it could have gone a bit heavier on the family stuff as well because there is this kind of through line of Billy Batson is worried about turning 18 mm-hmm. and, like, what's going to happen with his foster home and his family and he's worried about that coming apart. I think they could have, like, leaned into that a bit more. Because, uh-huh, like, yeah, yeah. all that family stuff in the first one and the idea that he'd been abandoned – and then you find out what happened to him. It's like it's like quite heartbreaking, mm. and I feel like this doesn't quite get there with that kind of right stuff. Do you want? Is, and I like everyone in his family, including his foster parents, and that. That's all great. Do you think it's because there's so many characters that it's hard in two hours to? Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. Cover that. Like I'm trying. Like I, I, I was, I was thinking. Oh yeah, the, I like you know the family dynamic. But in thinking about it just now, I'm like, well, not everybody had a ton to do. Did you like how they piled into a van, like the movie Black Adam? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie The Brady Bunch. Of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair enough, yeah. There is a lot of them, yeah. Uh, also, the original Billy Batson, uh, Michael Gray is in this. I did the, say that, yeah. From the 70s show. Yeah, yeah. He's just standing and he's wearing the same outfit. <laughs> that's right. He's got the same haircut. Mm-hmm, yeah. Love all of that. A show that we did look at and loved we for loved Caravan it, of yeah. Garbage uh, a, a few years back. Should we do some spoilers? Let's do some spoilers. I'm going to say best movie ever. I think I thought it was fun. I think if you're like, man, I I, I want a superhero movie fix and why wouldn't you? Yeah. I, I think, think if you want to see more of this character, you should probably. And I do as mm. well. I think, and we'll talk about more of this in spoilers, like there's so much stuff they yeah. hint at that could happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Look, I don't, know if they, he's, I don't know if any of the Shazam family are going to get another, I guess, team movie again. Yeah. But, you know, there's certainly room for – Captain Marvel, Shazam, or any of them, I reckon on a on a team movie. Yeah, may, they could make appearances in something else. Absolutely. You know? So so yeah, um, you know. Yeah. What are you saying? Best movie ever? Or? Yeah, better okay. than Ant Man. Okay. Better than Black Adam. Is this our new rating system? Absolutely. Okay. It is. We're calling it threading the needle. Is there anything? Is it, is it better <laughs> or worse than? Where is it? Is it? Is there anything that would be in between those two movies though? So better than. Well, I mean, that the question there is because mine would be different to yours, I think. Yeah. Because for me, if a movie was a movie, would have to be to thread that needle, it'd have to be worse than Black Adam, but better than Ant Man, because Black Adam's above Ant Man for me. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't even know where I. Yeah. I don't know anything. <laughs> None of us know everything, James. That's why we do podcasts. Anyways, Mason, big spoilers and cameos. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, apparently there was there was a shot that David F. Sandberg talked about this where. So there's a dome that goes over the city at one point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like in the television show. We can uh, say it about the end of the second act, James, because we're in spoilers. That's true. We don't, have, we don't have to be vague. We can say whenever it is. We can give time codes. End of the second act. Maybe. Isn't it like first act? Maybe. And then they're like, we're stuck in this. Yeah, probably. And no one's panicking. I'd be panicking big time. Yeah, yeah. But like, how the heck? Anyway, it's like under the dome. I'd be in the sewers trying to get my way out through the Dig sewers. Dig your way out. Yeah. I think they thought of that, Mason. <laughs> oh, I think yeah? you, th- you think you're being clever, but you're not. I'd ride a toilet crocodile. <laughs> Would to you? my freedom. Okay, well that's cool, yeah. I guess. But apparently there was going to be like a like a long shot of like either Batman or Superman like trying to get in the dome. Ah. You wouldn't see who like which actor it was. Okay, right. You know, recurring gag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, movies sure. is that you 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 don't use anybody's <laughs> face. And I like it's that the Adam West gloves. <laughs> sure. It's those satiny, those Ooh. satiny navy blue gloves. I love that. And he's like, I can't get through. <laughs> <laughs> but Shazam is having a dream. He's doing the double-handed punch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can't get through even by double-handed punch. <laughs> that's the big one. Throws his bat- sock pal. Throws his batarang up and it just slides off. Uh-huh. Eee, <laughs> clunk. So uh, he has he's having a dream and he's mm. dreaming he's on a date with Wonder Woman yes. or whatever and they're just going to make it work. And then his face, and you never see Wonder Woman's face and it's like a bit of a big gag. And then it's revealed that it's a wizard mm. and he's warning him about the return of Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren. Mm. And Rachel Zegler. 
is yes. the third one. Oh, yeah. we can say it now because we can say it spoilers. Now. Oh, the relief. I know. The one new character that was introduced yeah. in, uh, in, in uh, Freddie Freeman's life turns out to be the, uh, the villain. 6,000 years old as well. Yeah. Yeah, because mm. yeah, it's weird because so much of the civilian scenes, like the school scenes, it's Freddie Freeman, but the superhero stuff. I'm yeah. still not 100% convinced that the what? they're not the same character. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, Because it's not like a Spider-Man movie. It's Peter Parker swinging on webs in the city and then we cut to the school and it's a, in, a different actress doing all the rom-com stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Tom, it's Tom Holland. Absolutely. It's always Tom Holland. It's always Tom Holland. Mm. So I don't know if you saw, but there, the scene when Wonder, oh, I saw it. Wonder Woman actually shows up in this movie. That's correct. And I was like, she's just not in the same room as anybody here. <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. But I saw there was some behind-the-scenes images and it was a stand-in who filmed there and apparently then – and someone was like, did they deep fake her? And David F. Samberg said, we shot the scene with Taylor as a stand-in to figure out what co- – it was Taylor K who was her name – to figure out what coverage we then needed to get with Gal since we couldn't uh, – she couldn't make it to Atlanta. It was also ta- Taylor's body who the, uh, with the wizard's head on it. There's absolutely no deep fake going on uh, when you see Gal. It's 100 percent her. So, but you never see them interact right, really. Uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh. So it did feel like she was just kind of like, "Hello, everybody, I'm mm. here," and they're like, "A oh, Wonder Woman's here." Also, she shows up like she's. It's very much like it's like the definition of a Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. Because Billy Batson dies. Yes. For real, he dies. Yeah, he real does. And then they're like, "How do we get out of this?" Oh, well, let's literally have a god show up and go, well, I've reactivated your magic and now you can bring him back from the dead. Yeah. All right. Someone pointed out that she's not a real god, she's a demigod. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. But I don't care. I don't care. But there was no, like, so what are the the rules on this? What are the, uh, can that stick bring anybody back or just the champions or? It's a great question. Can it bring him back again? That's a great question. Can it? Can it get him a third movie? No. (laughs) No. No. Slightly different riff at the end. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it just felt like nobody's here. Sure, yeah. Scene. And look, I'm glad that the character didn't die. But yeah, I just, no, sure, yeah. It just felt odd. And also, where was she? I know that's a question. Outside could... the dome. Oh, yeah. Okay, question answered. It was good they locked down that city. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was a pretty clever way of being mm, like, yeah, well, yeah. no one's doing nothing yeah. here, are they? <laughs> See, if this, were, if this movie were a big hit, then every subsequent Marvel and DC movie would have somebody locking down the city yeah. to just allay all those questions. Well, I'm sorry, locked down the city. They locked it down, mate. explains why the Avengers weren't there and locked down the city. Do you want to talk about the post-credits or a lot of things in spoilers? You don't, yes. want, you don't want to talk no, about that? No, I'd like to talk about it, yeah. Okay, so uh, so the post-credits, it's two, uh, it's two members of the Peacemaker Suicide Squad show. Sure, yeah, yeah. Turn up. It's Jennifer Holland and Steve A. Economos. Uh, yes. John Economos. That's right. And they walk up to see Shazam, who's just blasting bottles at a, as a, mm. at a gas station for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, do you want to join the Justice Society? And he's like, well, I'm very horny. Mm. And will Wonder Woman be in it? And yeah. I, I like the scene. I thought it was uh, – uh-huh. I like every – What do they have those... to do with the Justice Society? Well, though? that's funny you should say that because I have a tweet here from David S. Sandberg who said they were supposed to be the Justice Society members, but when that fell apart at the last minute, we had to improvise. Oh, so it's supposed to be like a Hawkman and a uh... – Whoever, yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. This happened way before Gunn became boss. I know a lot of people think it was his idea, but it wasn't. Because ha- his wife is Jenna Poland. Yeah, well, we'll right. talk about that in a sec as well. I'm happy we could use his character. <laughs> We're going to get into the salacious gossip <laughs> segment right. of the podcast. I'm happy we could use his character since I love Peacemaker. Peter Safran, uh, who also produced uh, Peacemaker, pulled some favours. As a fan, I was happy to have him uh, in the movie, even though it's perhaps a bit weird that they're the ones recruiting mm. for the Justice Society. So, of course, Jenna Poland's character, whose name I couldn't recall for a billion dollars, even though yep. I think you just said it. She's in Black Adam. Yes. And so, and when the Justice Society bring in Black Adam, they take him to a Task Force X, yes. Argus, j- underwater jail situation. So she's involved in that way. Which makes more sense. I yeah. Think. But she's Amelia not, Hardcourt. She's Hardcourt, not, yeah. she's not in the Justice Society, but I guess maybe, I, see, it felt like in Black Adam, the Justice Society. I mean, Justice Society is run by Amanda Waller, I guess. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Or not. I thought it was run by Hawkman. I thought it was his, like, independent kind of organization. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the just. I mean, you I You should guess- watch that movie again. I won't. No. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Because you liked it? No, I probably will. When- when's it free? Um, maybe... Maybe the Justice Society, like, it's it- it's meant to look like an independent organization. Here we go. We're no-prizing this. 
Mm. Maybe it's meant to look like an independent organization, but it's actually Argus's sort of public facing organization. It's like a competitor to the Justice League. Okay. Like we can't control the Justice League, but if we had our own team. Right, right, right. Maybe. Okay, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You know? I'm just checking of the um checking if I've got any information on this. Screen rant will know, Mason. Oh yes. If they have anything on how um how to explain the ending to the Dark Knight or something. The film's team has been show has been working for Amanda Waller. Okay. So there you go. So it was Amanda Waller, apparently. Yeah, okay. I do remember that. Yeah. So there you, I don't remember it, but okay. now I now we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She uh, does say who's on the she does I think they contact Hawkman and be like, who's on your yeah. team this time or whatever. I didn't stay around for the second scene. I like I Googled it and it's like Mr. Mind and, it is, yeah. And so I was it's, like eh. So it's Mark Strong is still in his jail. Has he cell. got his weird eye? No, he's both his eyes are fairly normal, but he's got a beard. That's cool. And he's got glasses, I think. And Mr. Mind is there and he's like, I'm back and I've I've been working on this plan and Savannah's like, it's been two years, wink, to the audience. It's only been two years. Nice. It's only been two years. It's 2021 now. Is it? Where we are. That's wink. where, yeah, okay, or cool. Or the previous movie was set in 2021. <laughs> wink. <laughs> wink. And and then Mr. Mind's like, but I still need more time to work on the plan, and he slithers off. That's great. Yeah. Well, we'll never see him again. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we will. Time will tell. What if this is the best running gag ever? What if every <laughs> what if every DC movie from this point forward cuts to Mark Strong? They just record twenty, and it's just Mark Strong in a room. He's going increasingly crazy. His beard Beard's keeps getting, getting longer. longer and longer, and he's getting all raggedy. <laughs> and, all, and, and then Mister Mind shows up, and he just I just need a little bit more time. And then next time, and maybe Savannah's like he's changed his life or something. He's all cleaned up, and he's <laughs> he's getting another degree. He's getting a teaching degree so he can go out and do yeah. good work or something. And it's you know, we have this whole drama in <laughs> post credits, and it's never resolved. How about that? I would love that. It's like the Mister Poopy Butthole. Yes, but it's <laughs> Doctor Zavada yes. and a caterpillar. Mm. I would love that. Yeah. Let's talk about the future, though. All right, there's so, going to be flying cars, so, I reckon. Well, that's right. So that yeah. post credits talks about how they're going to make him. He wants to be. A, they want him a member of the Justice Society. That's right. Uh, and he's like, "What's that? What's that? Mm-hmm. I'm a boy. That's confusing. That's confusing. Yeah." And there was complaints that. That James Gunn has been casting his wife in all of these okay. movies. But he came out and said, the only DC movie I've ever cast my wife in was The Suicide Squad. I had nothing to do with the casting of any of the other movies. Anything else was shot a year or so ago while I was deep in volume three. But I know Are you s- saying that she was in a movie behind my back? <laughs> what? <laughs> but I know some Shazam, of you- Shazam, <laughs> that pile of garbage. <laughs> I'll have words with her later. But I know some of you are deeply in need of reasons to hate. Also, nobody complained when James Gunn puts his brother in literally every movie. That's true. Also. Or I, his other brother. Or his, or other, his cousin. Or, or, his, or the third brother. Exactly. Also, I think she's great. Yeah. And she's great in Peacemaker. Yeah. And she's, uh, she's why like, do you care? She's like. If she was bad, I guess yeah, yeah. I could see the complaint. But she's, um, you know, a good character. She is good with the martial arts, I think. Yeah. Right. Or, I don't know, maybe. She's the... quick with a joke and to light up your smoke. Precisely. Yeah. But there's some place she'd rather be. A better movie. <laughs> a better movie. A better movie. Do you think... And the... she's in the... How... Do you think they get... With Peacemaker Season 2, what I the... I think the thing I want to know most of all is what are they going to do with the intro sequence? Okay, sure. Because everybody dies. Spoiler alert for Peacemaker. <laughs> you haven't seen it, but it's too late. But every... pretty much everybody in that in the movie, in, everybody in that series died and they're all, and everybody's in the opening sequence. Yeah, that's true. Including the janitor who's in Shazam 2. Really? He's the guy who is a in A different the, guy? Yeah, he's the, he's the guy in the, in the museum who gets turned to stone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've just made that connection now. Holy hell, you're right. Yeah. Damn. This continuity sucks, Mason. Why, because they're in the same universe. I just... Ah! Well, they're, they're collapsing this universe in on itself. That's true. Do you so think, matter. though, I think going forward, yes. there is absolutely a fair chance that the character of Shazam in this incarnation mm-hmm. will stick around. Yeah. And they'll put him in a team every now and then. They'll, you know, they'll trot him out just to see <laughs> if people... Him out. But... They'll trot him out. They'll check his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> they'll examine his teeth for quality. <laughs> Mm, still good, yes, good. <laughs> Brush his coat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> have him eat a carrot. But I think there's a chance that he, like, we could get a justice assault. I thought that this was an additional thing that they that James Gunn might have put in leading into something else. Yeah. But this is obviously filmed earlier, so before that. So who knows if we're going to get Justice Society movie anytime I would love it. soon. I would honestly love a yeah, Justice me too. Society movie. I liked I liked. I remember. I don't. I don't think you particularly loved the last team. 
Oh, did you? I liked the I liked Hawkman and Doctor Fate, right? But uh-huh. the other two I could like take. Yeah, away. Right, right, right. But, but I, yeah, I, put Shazam in. Put Shazam in. That yeah. would be perfect. Yeah, I think it also would work better when and he could do some meta commentary. He could be like, "Also, oh, you two are both you two are both related to ancient Egypt. Do you know you you didn't know Black you know, Adam? Yeah. You never met him, even though you're both thousands of years old. You never." <laughs> This is your first time. That was your first time meeting Black Adam. Really, that's interesting. <laughs> you two, of, the, of all the members of the Justice Society, you two went in yeah. to, to the Middle East and you met, but you'd never met him before. Never met him. Even though you're all magic <laughs> and you're all thousands of years old. It's weird. <laughs> I'm Shazam. Also, his name's Shazam. Yeah, How's he Shazam. going to explain that to the press? Well, yeah, because he will turn back into a man. And turn him into a, a different man. A, bo- a boy man. He'll, t- <laughs> he'll change back from a man, a man boy to a boy man. <laughs> Yeah, and they'll be like, "What is this?" I guess they'll just have to say. Sometimes you can say, "You got to say it with intent." Or yeah, maybe whatever. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I don't really yeah. know. Yeah, so it should be Captain Marvel. I think it'd be a funnier bit. if yeah. he's like, "I'm called Captain Marvel." Yeah, I agree. I mean, they said the Avengers in this. They said the Avengers, which something is, like that. There's some very variation on that. Yeah, I think they said the Avengers, but the Uma Thurman one with Ray Fiennes. <laughs> that's right. I think that's how they got away yeah, with yeah, it. They yeah. said it, British Avengers. Got a couple of tweets here from people who went along and they sent us these tweets. From Ben Berkowitz, who says, had fun with Shazam 2, but can we sign, we sign a petition making sure the phrase, let's end this slash, this ends here. Mm. Uh, so getting rid of that, yeah, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Maybe. And Nate Harris says, it's impossible to ignore this forgettable movie is made even more irrelevant. By it's the- impossible to ignore a forgettable movie? I don't think so. Well, Mason, I'm just reading what's said here. Okay. Uh, it's made even more irrelevant by the pending universe reset. Dead on arrival, worst movie ever. Mm. Look... I didn't think it was, I thought it was all right. No, so here's the thing, and I, again, I, the, the problem here, as I mentioned earlier, is that that thinking is kind of prevalent. Yeah. And I don't disagree with it. If you've spent a decade plus saying all of these movies are connected and then you say, and this is the end one, people aren't going to be like, why bother? Yeah. You know, it's as opposed to, you know, just, I, I feel like some of these, especially Quantumania, this Black Adam, it's like picking up an issue of a comic book yeah. and going, I don't necessarily know or understand what any of this is connected to, but mm. is it good on its own? And sometimes the answer is yes. <laughs> and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes the answer is this was fine. Yeah. Apparently David F. Sandberg is going to do like a small horror thing after this because he basically did two Shazam movies in a row. Uh-huh. Uh, and he, his horror movies are great. Um, but I also, like, if he – I wouldn't be surprised if he popped up to do some other stuff in the mm. DCU because I think he would be good at that yes. and has proven to be. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, should we move it along? Rizwan Manji is the name of the gentleman, the gentleman who's both the – He's, he's now in two roles in the DC. Maybe they're twins. Maybe they're twins. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're right. Do you know what it's time for, though? What's it time for? What are we reading? What are we going to read? Woo! Woo! I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> Here we tell the truth. We oh, tell yes? the truth about things we've been doing. Okay. All like right. how you leaked that stuff to Reddit or whatever. I cannot tell a lie. Twas me. Ah ha ha ha. Very good. Ah ha ha. I'll probably talk about this more next week if I end up buying it because okay. apparently it's amazing. But I played the demo for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Oh, yeah, right. I think I'm going to be one of those guys who waits on games or I'm going to try okay. to be instead of being like, oh, I'll get this thing and I'll never play it. Instead of being the ultimate hardcore gamer. That, which is me. Yes. Which actually, to be fair, I'm not really that either. But uh, I played Resident Evil 2 Remake uh-huh, and I was, uh-huh, uh-huh. Was, I was in a police building for too long and I... Excuse Kept, me? Was it in the, what about in the game, James? Mason, it was in the game. You're, you're bloody you're line up, mate. using my words against you're me. you bloody line up. Yes, I crime? did a big okay. crime and I had to do wow. a line up. Yeah. But then I played the video game. And there was too many, like, you'd get to a door and it was locked and it's like, find the key. And I'm like, you find the key. Whoa. But I know people liked it. But apparently this new, and I love Resident Evil 4, so a better yeah, version yeah. of that would be great. But what I have been playing, Mason, for oh, real. Oh, yes. I went into an, an Ebb Games earlier this week. Oh, an Ebb Games? By the way, big shout out to the two gentlemen who served me who, who listened to this, I think, oh, potentially. A couple of, yeah. couple of Ebb Games boys. A couple of Ebb Games boys. It was, wow, 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 It was wow, Ling wow. and another person who didn't have a name tag, so I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't get his name. But that's oh, not yeah. to say that they don't have a name. You think you think he hit his name tag? Yeah. So you couldn't see it? Yeah. But he knew my name. Interesting. Which was very Even rude. Even though you don't commonly wear a name tag. No, he knew me, though. Interesting. Except maybe you're wearing your McDonald's crew shirt from... from I was wearing from my a, crew shirt. From several, like a decade plus ago, yes. 15, 20 years ago. Maybe you were wearing that. From two years ago, yes. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Hello, my name is Surly James. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. I realised, Mason, that I'd played original Killzone on the PlayStation 2 and Killzone Liberation on the PSP and then Killzone 2 and Killzone 3 on the PlayStation 3 and then I played Killzone Mercenary on the PS Vita, which I think is probably one of the best handheld shooters ever made. Interesting. It's incredible. And even the touchscreen stuff is, is good. Is Killzone the one? With the red eyes and the Nazi outfit, orange eyes and the Nazi outfit. Is outfits. it because the aliens invade during World War II or something? No, is that the plot no, of you're thinking of Resistance, Mason. You're okay. thinking of the Resistance franchise, which was a different PlayStation exclusive franchise that also went across onto the PS Vita and PSP incarnations. I am thinking That's of That's what that. you're thinking of, Mason. And I'm thinking that the next time you mention Killzone, I'm going to ask you the exact same question. That's a good question to ask. That's a good question to ask, right? Uh, anyways, I realized I'd never played Killzone 4. So I was like, ah. I watched a retrospective on, um, what's that, Game Viz, but it's a V. You know that, no. that YouTube channel? No. It's really good. Uh, Sounds very return, but it's a V. It is. You know, people are all return. Return. You know those guys, those yeah, freaks? I do know those freaks. They've always got, <laughs> always got a philosopher's head, a stone philosopher's head. It's cool. Yeah. They're my people and that's cool. Well, they're like, we should go back to when women can't drive or whatever. And you're like. Oh, is that what they do? Yeah. No, I don't agree with that actually. Yeah. You tricked me then? I did trick you, but that's what you think. <laughs> so it's Killzone Shadow 4, which is Killzone 4, mm-hmm. is like 10 years old. But I went and I got it. By the way, eight bucks. What a bargain. There it is, all right. And it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's like obviously like it. it's cross-generational in terms uh-huh. of like it was like a – I think it was either a launch title or one of the very first games. It's from 2013 uh-huh. on the PlayStation 4. Uh, this, what I liked about those other games, there's more of – there's like a weight to the way that you move. Mm. It's like a he- and this kind of does yeah. away with that, which I don't like. Okay, right. But it's still a pretty solid shooter. I also think like first-person shooters – haven't done much in 10 years looking yeah, at this. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I, except for maybe Titanfall 2, which is probably the best single-player campaign. From yeah, Titanfall 2. That's, that, is, that is an amazing I've, game. Even I've played Titanfall 2. Yeah. It's great. And there's the time travel level. Time, there's One no time travel level. level and then never again. And then they made that online thing that people play instead or whatever. Mm. And now then they'll never be Titanfall Because I watched. 3. I was excited for that game Atomic Heart. Which is oh, that yeah. sort of Soviet Union yeah, yeah. steampunk but cyberpunk Bioshock kind of thing? Yeah, kind of thing. And then I watched some gameplay footage of it, and there was a lot of hand-to-hand combat that didn't really feel. Yeah, okay. It it didn't feel kind of visceral, or it it felt like you just you know you're just swiping. Yeah, and it's like that's not what. No. I want to feel the impact. You hit someone with a pipe, and their jaw comes yes, off. Yes, exactly. Like Doom has spoiled that. Yeah, I think. You're like right, that's yeah. that is the 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 pinnacle, probably Doom and Doom Eternal, and the yeah the, the, that the, visceral kind of. You put a spike through somebody's head yeah. and they go, whoop, whoop, you know? Don't. Come on. Yeah. Too late. Anyways, Killzone. Doomguy says, too late. Too late. I've I, done it. I've done it. I don't do it again. Killzone franchise. Yep. Pretty amazing. Oh. Kind of underrated though. It was kind of yeah. marketed. Well, the first one's not great. It was kind of marketed as this kind of, uh, this like halo killer. Right. And it's it never quite got there, yeah. but it's always been really consistent. And the portable titles are like the PSP one is an isometric like uh-huh. shooter. Right. It's really good. If you have a PS Vita or a PSP. I don't. You can still no get one it. does. It's just you. But if you do, if you can get one. Okay. Uh, I, I have it on the PS Vita too because I downloaded it again. Wow. It's because I like that. Recently? Yeah, like a year or so ago. That store is still open? They nearly closed now. I think that's why I downloaded it. Now it's still open. I have Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 on the PlayStation Vita. Wow. Which I've never played. Huh. I just have it. I've got and War, God of War one and two original on the PS Vita, which I've never played. I just wow. bought for no reason because I thought they were collapsed. Because you thought it would make you cool. Yeah, and, look, and it, it worked. <laughs> so, you know what I'm going to read tomorrow? I haven't read it yet, but what, I, I didn't finish. I, I read the first couple of issues, but the hardcover is out now, so I'm going I'm to get it. And read it. It's our uh, Batman eighty nine, the full, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the full thing. I should do uh, that by original movie writer Sam Ham. He's back with uh, Joe Quinones and Leonard Leonardo Ito, and it's uh, yeah, nice. the first first issue or two I read. Delightful, the continuing adventures of Mister Michael Keaton, Batman. He's back, yeah, man. Uh, also, speaking of comics, uh, our Big Sandwich comic classic book club is up this week, and oh, it's yes? on Ultra Mega, yeah, which mm-hmm. is a really gross and grotty kaiju. Ultraman kind of comic situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are interested in checking that oh, out. Oh, and I listened to Andy Donna's podcast this week. Uh, it's called Kevin Figgy, and it's uh, – uh, it, I, I know it's not, but it feels like it was the character was created just to upset me. <laughs> but it's very funny. It's uh, Maybe they did do that. Can you – what 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 do you imagine a character called Kevin Figgy is about? I mean, it's Kevin Feige, right? Yes, but he, <laughs> but he 
he he makes us he produces a subset of the Marvel universe that's all about figs. <laughs> okay. And he wears a fig atop his head as if it were a hat. <laughs> Sounds really good. It's extremely funny. It's a funny episode. People should. I don't know. If, I don't know if our. I don't know if there is a ton of crossover between listeners of us and the Auntie Donna podcast. But I think. I think there would be some. Yeah, I think there would be some. Yeah, and there should be. I agree. Start some. Should we move to the next segment of the show? I mean, eventually, somebody what? gets into gear and off their bloody ass and finds the Weekly Planet letters theme. Before we're doing the letters segment right now, Mason, are you referring to yourself? Yes. It's not loading. Well, the classic one was letters, Woo! oh letters, Woo! we love you, ah! and some letters, boo? they're only Ooh. a day. Boo again, that's second boo, there. just boo's now, what boo, now? boo, what are you booing? This, boo. The podcast? Boo this segment. The, con- the segment itself, yeah. why? You love the listeners. I do. Mm. Uh, if you do want to reach the show, because we love you, hashtag Weekly that's Planet right. Pod on Twitter, or Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com, Mason. Do you have anything from the Gmail you've dragged up this week? This is an email from Tyler. Tyler. This is a minor Harry. incident involving the pod. Uh-oh. Hey, Meso and Jim. What? That's you. Don't do that. Uh, today, while I was cooking, an unfortunate series of events happened, which ended with my Weekly Planet mug breaking. My one and only piece of merch from the pod. It's been one of my go-to mugs for years now, and it was a big bummer. Now, I'm not sure if you can count this as a pod-related accident. Um, I think it counts. Since I wasn't actually listening when it happened. I'll allow uh, it. But I figured I should let you know for the official tally. Uh, when I was looking for a replacement mug, it got me wondering if you guys will ever be dropping more merch or designs. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. And listen, know. since 2015, and love supporting you. Thanks for all the great content over the years and come be the official broken mug man of the pod. You yes, but we are going to imagine you as a mug man. <laughs> and you're broken. And you're broken. Oh, no, that's bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, here's a photo. He's provided photo evidence. He wasn't lying. Unless, of course. Devastating Unless, news. of course, he's broken it deliberately for Dro- clout and content. Well, In which case, I say, bless you. <laughs> Because I was hurting for letters, and I really appreciate that. Are we doing more merch? I would love to do, and I, I say this every time as if it were a joke, but it's real. I would love to take out the Batman v Superman episode and put it on vinyl. Take it out completely and no, feed. No, we'd leave it in the feed, <laughs> although I suppose people could listen to it for free. Yeah, um, I guess they could. Yeah, yeah. All right. But I'd put it on vinyl, I think. It would be. I don't know if we could put the Batman logo on there. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, our own design. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Claire did some vinyl recently. It's possible. We have a, I do believe we have a Weekly Planet logo, which is us as Batman and Superman yeah, from absolutely. that thing. So I, I, we could put that on the in, the liner notes. Sure. I would love to do that. If, if there's a service that does like print, like we we do pre-orders. Yeah. And then people would buy well, we it. we probably could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I won't do it, but somebody, yeah, the, see, that's the, somebody set that yeah, up. Is not see, that's me. the, because Claire, uh, as as you know, James, perhaps, yeah. you, perhaps you don't know, but your wife, Claire, uh, produced an album what? and and printed up merch and T-shirts yeah. and all this sort of stuff. And so now she's in a position where anybody orders one, she has to pack it up and ship it out. She's now got a friend helping her with that. Nice. Because, yeah, uh, that's a big reason why we go through, like, Redbubble or whatever mm. we do. What do we do again? Redbubble, yeah. yeah. And Tee Public? Yeah, because yeah. it's – I don't want to – I don't want to yeah, – I don't yeah. want to handle anything physically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. <laughs> that includes people. You don't like being handed anything. No, I just – I I just I just can't. I can't with that shit. I just – I just don't want it. It's just an extra thing I don't want to yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, Mason, I've got a tweet here from Ed Day who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, gents, do you think there is more of a chance of a Batgirl coming out that now that Brendan Fraser has won an Oscar? I was just thinking about that earlier and probably not. Yeah. For like, um, we would like to think that, I would say, because we don't deal with billion-dollar transactions yeah. and our lives aren't our – lives, our lives are about enjoying things and not – Doing stuff for tax reasons, exactly. Uh, but the the people involved, it would cost them more money if they released it because the whole thing's a tax write off, etc. I think there's yeah. more of a chance, but I think there's yeah. more of a chance it will leak. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting yeah. question, Mason. Why don't you make a merch? You make a big merch for us. Oh yeah, like a t shirt. I don't know. Maybe I could hand make mugs. You I could. could take a pottery class and I yeah. can sell individual. I know mugs. someone who does that. Huh. Which they'd means be it's bad possible. mugs. To be yeah, clear. that'd be bad. Yeah. 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 yeah, but you could. I could do it. That's true. Mm. What else, Mason? Here's an email from Michael. What? He says, I met a comic icon and told him about you guys. <gasps> Who? Well, you'll find out in a moment. Oh. Hey, boys, long time listener, but this is my first time writing in. I don't believe you. I mean, it's, that's what it says. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying I don't believe it. Okay, right. <laughs> right. I'm a Canadian film student near Toronto who just attended Comic-Con where I met Peter J. Tomasi. He signed my copy of Batman and Robin Born to Kill. Oh, yeah. Which we could do on the book club. What are you doing? I don't believe him, Mason. He's doing, the, he's doing an <laughs> I don't believe you motion. 
The universal symbol, I don't believe. <laughs> no, you. I believe you. Very happy to say he was a nice guy and kept a sm- and he was a, a nice guy and kept a smile on his face as I shamelessly plugged the podcast to him while wearing my Doctor Dracul Dracula shirt. <laughs> Speaking of merch, <laughs> uh, like the correct. awful nerd that I am, photo <laughs> down below. There is no photo. Uh, hopefully he's listening right now. Can I be the official shameless Canadian plug of the podcast? Thank you. That's really cool. Yeah. I hope that worked. I mean, yeah, my, uh, Peter J. Tomasi done a bunch of stuff. A lot of DC stuff. Yeah, a lot of DC. Um, yeah. Uh, Batman and Robin the Outsiders, some Green Lantern, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, that's really Tremendous. cool. Tremendous. And nice man. Yeah. By all accounts from this email. I feel he's done probably some indie work as well. Maybe I'm imagining that. Yeah, maybe he's, ne- he's only ever done big DC books. Yeah, I'm looking at his Wikipedia, and it's just it seems to be all DC stuff, yeah. like Super Sons and Super Sons. Is great, tremendous. Yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking of from him from. I got to, for sure. He did GI Combat. There you go. Oh, but that's also a DC thing. Oh, fun stuff. Mm. Got another tweet here, Mason. Go oh, on. if you could just yeah, harass people and tell them our podcast. Sure, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. recite some of the jokes. It definitely, yeah. Or some of the reviews that we do. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a news segment. Some of the arguments we have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Impenetrable references. Maybe if you could just, you know, recite one of those points where we just, neither of us really knows what we're saying and we just kind of, you know, we get stuck in a review and yep, we don't really yep, know yep. how to describe the thing we're feeling and, we, yep. and one of us is just like, what? And, 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 and I'm then, like, you know, the vibe. Yeah. And then the other one says, Hermes and Darkus, which is a yeah, yeah, character yeah. from Ship to Shore. Oh, okay, which right. Which is an impenetrable reference. That's a good reference. That's a good reference. Mason, this is from Rodri RRR who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. What is the wrong, what wrong lesson will Hollywood learn from the award success of everything everywhere all at once? Is it multiverse stuff, Mason? Is it? That's a, I feel like maybe not. You don't think they're going to learn anything? I mean, do you think oh, they, they, they're not going to learn anything. They're not going to learn anything correctly. Do you think, I mean, the thing to learn from that would be, hey, maybe there's some talent in areas that you haven't looked before right. from actors from, you know, from now or the past. Yeah. And maybe if you write something unique and cool, then it could do well. Do you think they'll learn that? No. <laughs> okay. A different thing. I get. See, the thing. I Hot was... dog finger, wackiness. Oh, whimsy. Yeah, I know. Whimsy. Like, we're already in big multiverse at the moment. Well, that's what that's I'm saying. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. Is that a charger? Yes. You got a full portable charger there, Mason? Yeah, because my phone was dead before. Is that me. illegal? Yeah, it's a crime. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But I mean, you know, now that I'm. Engaging in this life of crime because I leaked that thing. You did, you yeah. yeah. Or you know who leaked it or whatever. I, yeah, both yeah. of those things. Well, I know it's me. Of course I know who leaked it. It's me. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Mar- Marvel's already engaged in the multiverse and DC's in the multiverse. And yep. I think they're, they're – I think that probably the industry is waiting with bated breath to see if people are still interested in this sort of thing generally. And we will see, won't yeah, we? But yeah, but I'm not sure. don't know. Don't know. The Daniels who directed that, they turned down Marvel to do it, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they had some We didn't really talk about the Oscars. Well, it's now. We can talk about it now. <laughs> okay, that's true. Uh, good stuff. There we go. All right. I thought there were some good people who have won some things and whatever. Mm, for sure. And, but I, I didn't watch it or care. Mm. But it was up 12% on last year, and that might be a slap situation. That's true. Yeah. That is very true. Did, what do you have to anyway, say about it? N- nothing really. <laughs> I, none of it really surprised me, I don't think. It was nice to see Michelle Yeoh <laughs> yep, yep, get an yep. award. Yeah. And it was like, it was like Kehu Kwan yeah. as well. It was sort of, they, they and Brendan Fraser, they all won awards and like we, we're all acting kind of like they're like fresh-faced babes in the woods who've <laughs> yeah. never done anything in their <laughs> yeah, lives, exactly, even yeah. though they've all had like full careers and, you know, uh, you know Michelle Yeoh was like an action star for decades yeah. in Hong Kong and so was... K. Hugh Kwan and, uh, yep. you know, and he did like, and, and also he's been behind the scenes for a long time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, what do you think about that? I, I think it's good. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no lessons learned. No lessons. We didn't learn any lessons. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I don't know. Mm. Hey, multiverse, no, whimsy, maybe, probably more Asian representation in Hollywood. You're saying that's the wrong thing. No, I'm saying that's the. No, I'm saying that's the. That James, saying, James, I'm very clearly saying that's the right thing. All right. Yeah. Did you, we mentioned off air? We saw the trailer for Beef. Yeah. With um, there was another Stephen Ewan and uh, and um, Ali Wong, which looks very. It's supposed to be a comedy drama, but it looks very dark. I love about it. a about a road rage incident that goes wrong, and then they give up their lives essentially to to pursue this beef forever. Yeah, that's I'm right. excited to watch. There's that. also a trailer for Joyride, which has got an all Asian cast, which mm. looks good. Also, 
And there's the another game. thing that has Stephanie Sue in it mm. coming up soon. It's a family thing and it looks interesting. The one I'm talking about where they go to China or whatever? No. It's something, something, family, something. I'll look it up. Okay. Anyway, maybe that'll be it. Maybe it will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it the show? It's the whole show, mate. Wow. It's the whole show, mate. Well, what do you think about, about that? It's about time, I reckon. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's about time, I think. It's about time. It is about time. Time says 17 minutes, so it's yeah. about time. It's about time, yeah. Full time, it says an hour and a half. Well, so. yeah, we took some breaks in between. <laughs> Obviously, I sure did. Drink, et cetera, but please uh, continue. Folks, thank you so much for listening to the pod. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you for telling your friends about it, be they mere mortals or legendary comic writers and artists. Whoa. We'll take either. Or celebrities. Celebrities. That's right. Go on. Uh, or uh, thank you also for giving us a five star review on your podcast catcher of choice. I just brought them up now, Mason, because I realized they didn't gather them. So as you were talking, I subtly. Oh, you're, you're got good. Them. You Smooth as silk. Because I was doing mm. this. Yeah. Oh, I also listen to Broden's podcast, his new podcast. Oh, his the, football the, the podcast. The footy. Yeah. Broden Kelly. Didn't understand it. Don't know anything about football. But you loved it? It's pretty good. And Excellent. It's good conversation. It's um, Him and Tom. It's Broden and, and Tom Armstrong who does mm. all of Auntie Don's music. So And this podcast. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Mason, if you didn't read a review of the show, do it in app, just like Larry did, who said, Larry. just gave us five stars, by the way. It's a name you don't hear often these days. I agree. But mm. It's a good name. It's a good, strong name, and it's a good, strong review. Mm. Five stars says, if you let something go and it comes back. So preface, I used to listen to this podcast while working my past job. Absolutely loved it and had a coworker who also listened. For some reason, I stopped listening. Fast forward years later, I am back and listening again like a ham. I mean, mad men. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> Journey through all the content. Because it's John Ham, I guess. Yes. Journey through all the content I missed over the years that I've never felt better. Something must have been wrong with me since I stopped listening. Anyways, it's a top-notch program that isn't for everyone, but what? is mostly for everyone. I've been told Cheers. it's for everyone. Oh, cool. And this one is from Grazi23. Oh, Grazi. Ha, 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 fantastic. Tom doing my best to die, uh, tragically, in a Mission Impossible stunt cruise impression. Very good. Two five-star reviews, which I read out. And I'm going to read them all out. Just Grazie. give me time. Grazie. That's what I say. Uh, folks, thank you very much for that. If you want to get in contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. At Facebook, Twitter, and Bandcamp, you can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Podcast Discord and subreddit. Whoa. That's right. If you want to follow some people on the socials, I you do. Can first of all, follow our friend Rob Collins, who edits this podcast and does all sorts of social medias and video editing and all kinds of stuff. He gets amongst it. That's what we'd say about him. I agree with you. He gets amongst it. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's also at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. Uh, if you must, you can follow us. I'm Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and Nick Mesa on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. I certainly am. I certainly He's am. He's also on that episode of Confessions. I am. If, you've, if you forgot. If you forgot. If you forgot from earlier or you're starting the podcast now. That's right. If you start at the credits and stop after the credits. <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, let's see uh, if you want to support the show. You can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck. buck. Or go to bigsandwich.co for nine US dollars per month. Bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, all sorts of stuff. Maybe some Let's Plays at some point. I completely agree. Maybe. Maybe. Do you think? Yeah. yeah there will be. Yeah, yeah, there will be. I think so, yeah. Uh, we'll try it out. Let's see. Um, you can go to tpublic.com if you want to buy a Weekly Planet t-shirt or a mug. I agree. Maybe. Red yeah. bubble. One of mug. Them. I don't know. They're out there. And IKEA, buy a mug. Buy a mug. The lo- your local supermarket. Get probably Mason has a mug. mug too. He doesn't have any mugs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Even though it looks like a bloody mug. I got a bloody mug in this bloody room. It's James. He's a mug at this table. Hey, don't say that. Come on. <laughs> don't say that, Mason. He's got the bloody mug. Don't say that. I said. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just mumbled non-verbally. Ah! My microphone nearly fell onto me. That's yeah. never happened before. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the bas- uh, the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Next week, a different thing. It's a, it's a movie extravaganza. It really it's is. It's another movie coming out, John Wick out, right? coming out. John Wick 4 with a late Lance Reddick. Apparently it's very long, but people are like, the best. All right. So that's good. All right. Looking forward to seeing that. Oh, our pal Comic Tropes, Chris oh. from Comic Tropes, has just put up a video is on it? the Spider-Man musical. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll I, I actually that. bought a book to read on that because I thought about doing a video on it. Too late. It's too late. He's done it. So now I don't have to read that book. Thank God. That's right. Thank God. God, Thank can you, you imagine reading a book? Thank you, Comic Tropes. <laughs> You've saved me the hassle. All right, let's get out of here. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.